Hi everyone, I hope you're well and you're happy. So in this video, I'm just gonna show you just basic tools and necessities that you're gonna need to uh, make perfect DIY projects, whether it's for your woodworking, whether it's for home maintenance, or you know, whatever it is that you want to do. So this is just basically your minimum, just like your minimum basic. And I'm always going to say that you do not need all the fancy and all the amazing tools that you see at the shops because most of the most of them you barely will not even use them as often as they are and you know to be honest you know woodworking and DIY it's, it becomes expensive so you need to be very conscious of that so I'm just gonna show you just the minimum the basic tools that you're gonna need to so that you can come up with perfect projects for your home and also for your for your business as well so normally you see i try to be as minimum as possible when it comes to the tools that i use over in all the videos that i do so it's because i just want you to be more i want you to be more relatable because i don't find joy in me using amazing tools and going to buy something which is highly expensive which i will not even use so with me the only electronic power tools that i have is my power drill and also an electric sender. So those are the two things which are electrical that I have. So I don't have your table saw, I don't have your uh, circular saw, I don't have your jigsaw. So there's many different things. So uh, there's always an alternative in, in all of these tools. Uh, so what I strongly advise that you do before I get to the showing you the different tools is that um, don't buy everything all at once. So try out something and then the more you progress with your skill and the more you get better with the skill day to day, that's when you can start, okay, introducing different tools with your journey. So don't buy everything on a bulk because it's just wasting time because you 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 you, don't, you might not even have the space for it and you just spend so much money which is not even necessary. So the first thing that I'm going to do is a, is a drill. So this is your cordless uh, drill. So basically this is battery operated. The main reason I choose this is because uh, this is flexible. I don't have to be connected to a power source. Like now where I'm working, I'm not close to a power source. So it's more, it's, I just try, this is plug and play. So I just, sorry. <laughs> so what I do is just, I just charge this and then, you know, I'm ready to go. So you can have this in um, the coded version as well. So with the coded version is that you just need to plug, make sure that you plug it onto the wall uh, for electric power supply. Uh, so the reason I, I love this and I will always continue using uh, something which is cordless is because um, when I'm working outside, I can take this along. You know, you can't do that with the cordless. So if you have an extra, because there's a price difference when it comes to the corded ones and also the cordless ones. So with the with this ones which are battery operated, there's a price point to it. There, there's a price difference between the two. So what you need to know is that if you can spend an extra 300 rands just to get something which is convenient, please do it and you will thank yourself later. So I'll do a se separate video where I'm showing you how to use a drill, but this is not that video. I'm just showing you the basic things. So with the, with the drill, you always need a drill bit. So this is, there are many different kinds of uh, drill bit. So this is the one that you use for wood. You, um, I don't, I'm going to show you a picture of how it looks because there's always like a tiny tip point on it and then so that you can just grip onto the wood and then you just put it in and then you know you're good to go so so that's it that's how you work with it so this is a drill bit so you can't use a screw with this so this is just for opening up the way so basically by opening up the way i can say that this is just for pre-drilling they always think the one thing that i'm always advocating is pre-drilling so you pre-drill with the drill bit just to open up the way for your screw and then also you're gonna need um this bit here so this is just an extender so you can buy this additionally and then because the the one this is the the bit that you normally use to uh bite onto the screw let me show you how it works so this is the one thing that you're basically going to need. So this fits most of the screws which are star shaped. So normally the, the writing on this is PZ2. It's a bit little tiny writing on it. It's a PZ2 and then it just marries most of the screws on it. So you can see how it's marrying the screw. So I normally use this extender because this is too small for here. So I don't like it. I just want a bit of a, what's the word? I want a bit of control because I don't want this to put, so I always put this in extender and it's a magnetic extender and then just put it in. Oh, sorry. Oof. 
So you just put it in and then that's it. And then that's it. That's how you start working and then start putting your screws and everything is good to go. So this, oh sorry. So you just put this in and then, you know, you're good to go and then start working your project. So the next thing, so the drip booth come in different sizes. I'll explain in the next video how the different drip booths and then different names as well. Uh, so don't worry about it. Don't make it too complicated for yourself. So the next thing, which is crucial, you need uh, a, a whole lot of screws. So the screws, you can buy them in many different sizes. They, they come in different millimeters, 10 millimeters, uh, you know, they come in uh, millimeters, uh, sorry, they come in many different millimeters and sizes. So you just need to choose depending on the product that you have. So I, what I always do, I always have like a different range of different sizes of screws so that you're able to work in different projects as well. So don't be shy when you're buying the screws because you're really going to need them. And then the next thing is a, is this block of sender. So basically, this is used in just giving fine edges onto your uh, final project and give it a nice smooth so this is the cheaper version and it works perfectly well the only thing you just need to put a lot of elbow grease on it and then just put a lot of effort while we're working with this so if you want something convenient and also power connected i use a mouse electric sender this is by ryobi um it's i've been using it ever since i started the journey it's never failed on me i've been using it ever since uh, and it's perfect so you, what you need with this you need to make sure that uh you have the different papers that you're, they're called grid uh sending papers so they come in different sizes and also different numbers you see them listed on them i'm going to do also a separate video just to give it a bit of insight on how it works so there's different numbers listed on this and then you just need to just attach it and then you are good to go and then they then start sending away and you know all the way this is for cosmetics so this is perfect for cosmetics it's very important that you have this especially if you want something which is presentable and then you just need to prepare your wood before you start painting um so another thing with the uh sending most shops sell this paper on its own like in a roll form i don't have that so you will normally come across this and then they come in different p numbers so there's p80 p100 p120 up to about you know i think i've seen the maximum that i've seen is about p580 that's like the maximum that i've seen um you know where i've been so um so it depends on the fineness on how you find you want it to be so you can get away with two different sizes and then just um so don't worry i'm starting to ramble i know so um i'll make a better video so that you can understand how the different sizes work so it's basically the different the, the different roughness and the different finishes that you're heading for so this also it's cheap you can get it for 30 rand at a chinese shop or also you can get it at your hardware store as well so this you don't have to put much effort on it um this is also good it's convenient and i also love using this as well so the next thing, um, which is key. So the next thing that we need is a tape measure. So this, this is just your normal, you know, day-to-day -day tape measure. So this one is, the, the, they come in also different sizes as well. So this is, I think, is maximum about five meters long. So um, with the tape measures, the trick is just to know how to read the numbers on it and you'll be good to go. So most of them come in inches, some, most of them come in centimeters, most of them come in millimeters. So please bear in mind of that because there's different, um, there's different in those kind of units. So this is your go-to tool. You always see plumbers, you always see carpenters, you know, mostly this is your go-to um, tool when you're working with maintenance and also DIY projects as well. So it's easy to read, so just get accustomed on how to read the tape measure. And um, what's the next thing that, so, you know, when we're working with wood, we normally, you know, have to have the wood cut. So with me, I don't have any equipment to cut wood. And when I tell people that they do not believe it. So what I normally do, I always ask my home improvement stores to cut the wood for me because uh, one, for two reasons. One, um, the tools, I'm still wanting to learn how to use the different tools. I just don't want to jump in and just say, oh, I'm going to use a table saw without having prior experience because those are power tools and they become very dangerous. So I didn't want to just DIY power tools, um, wood cutting power tools because I needed to make sure that I'm 100% sure with the safety and I'm also comfortable as well. So don't just jump in and say, oh, well, I want to buy a table saw. 
Um, I've seen stories where people cut their fingers, people lose their limbs and everything because they just jumped in without doing prior research and also prior training. I'm going to say training because it's important because when you're using those advanced cutting tools, it's very important that you have proper training and safety protocols that you do not cut corners on. So I don't have any wood cutting equipment as yet. Um, so if you want to uh, help your girl out, give me a shout and then we'll, <laughs> we'll have a conversation. So, um, and then the second thing uh, is because they're very expensive. We need to be considerate of that. So if I'm having the wood store cut my, my wood for me, I, I they normally charge me the first four cuts is for is for free. So the first four cuts is for free. Then the next coming cuts, I pay one rand per cut. So normally, in a in a good day, in a good project, maximum I have not even paid more than twenty rand for for them to cut the wood for me. Some stores do it for free. So you can check out your Timber City if you're in South Africa. You can check out Timber City Builders Warehouse, Lero Merlin. Um, who am I forgetting? I'm not sure if CTM does as well. Uh, there's Buco. There's also the Buco is also good. They also cut your, your wood for you. So try to go around and ask at the different hardware stores if they do wood cutting. So and I'm gonna go just to wrap up the the wood cutting. So don't be the only thing is that you get limited because you have to make sure that before you go to the store you have the specific cuts that they need to cut for you. And please be nice to the guys at the stores. They'll always you know do things easier for you. And also, if, um, so this is a hand saw. So this one is not the best one because it's, the teeth are not really fine. So this is a hand saw. So if you want something which is nice and quick and you just want to cut it, the reason I try to shy away from using a hand saw is because I'm not really precise. Uh, I struggle with precision. So uh, if I'm cutting something, which I'm saying, if I'm cutting a 40 millimeter cut, you'll find I'll be about a few millimeter off. So it puts me a bit off. So I try to run away from this. Many people use this and then it's perfect. So if you are a, a precise person and you're able to use a hand saw, go ahead and do this and cut your wood for yourself. So this is a hand saw. So basically if I've mainly covered your basic tools, and you know don't come at me and say oh no we, you use many different things no i don't use many different things these are my basic things that i'm using for most of my projects so coming to the cosmetic side of things and safety so don't cut corners when it comes to safety um you, you should never cut corners you know our bodies are the temple of the lord so do not cut corners make sure that you wall fully protected so there's eyeglasses so i would normally use my eyeglasses when i'm you know working with your electric sender because when you're sending there's a lot of dust particles that fume that fly around so please be careful of that and then now we're in a pandemic so you don't have to buy specialized masks so if you can afford a specialized mask please do that because most of the uh, paints that we use and also the stains they have a lot of fumes so use that and then just to cover your mouth and your nose and make sure that you're fully protected so i'm using your your surgical mask because we're in a pandemic so why not you know we're saving money now and then also uh coming to the safety part there's always um hand gloves so use your hand gloves uh don't use your winter gloves please <laughs> Don't use your winter gloves because you're going to need them the next winter. So just use normal surgical gloves. And then when you're staining, when you're working with paints, use your normal surgical gloves to keep your hands protected. Because I'm an advocate that if you're doing woodworking and DIY project, you don't have to have rough hands. You have to have soft hands at all times. So make sure that you're fully protected. And then now we come into your basics. So it's a paintbrush. So you can have a couple of this paint, but they're cheap as well. So um, I always go to this different kinds. You know, there's like the Lamborghini of paint brushes. And then there's, you know, the minimum <laughs> entry level paint brushes. The disadvantage with those ones is that uh, the bristles on the paint brushes are different. Uh, they do different, perform different functions as well. They normally, if the quality is not the best, then normally the bristles, you find them left over on your... Uh, final product so please take note of that as well uh you can have a couple of this if um they are cheap so you have a couple of this and then have wood glue you know the i've bought i've been using this for the last 10 projects if i can say and then most of the projects i'm using are minimum projects so if you want a bit of um, strength and re reinforcement in your structure use wood glue 
this is perfect as well and then so when it comes to the cosmetic part of things so this is helicon paint stains so this you're going to be seeing me using most of them in most of the videos so when it comes to stains you just need you can either use um, a paint brush or also uh, an old cloth let me see if i have so this is like an old cloth you just apply your different uh, stains as well so don't worry about you know me showing you how to do the specific things so this video is not about that it's just to show you the basic things that you need so if you have extra cash you can throw in this is what we call clamps so the clamps come in different sizes and forms and as well and then they come in different strength most of them are plastic some of them are you know steel and some of them are you know round shaped so they come in different forms so if you have extra cash throw this um clamps two at most you'll be good um if you can't afford it don't stretch it you will manage to do dr project without them even if it not be the the most smoothest ride but you will not this will not prevent you from making beautiful projects so uh what's the other thing that i i think i've covered most of the things eh? so this is basically what you need you do not need anything which is magical you just need you you just need your patience you just need your um you just need you coming here encouraged and making sure that you're gonna do this thing and then this is all you need this is just basic oh and also just another thing if you're doing home maintenance as well uh you might need a school driver as well please take note of that and i'm not an advocate of you going to pounding and drilling on walls uh, don't drill on walls and until you're fully sure that you know what you're doing uh because there's i also stay away from drilling on walls don't do that so with that being said this is just a rundown of um you know all the tools that i use for my diy projects and for my home maintenance as well and yes i do my own house maintenance as well uh some of the things with limitation um i don't get on those though <laughs> so you know be don't be brand conscious you know brand there's so many different brands out there things are expensive please take note of that it doesn't mean that if something is expensive it means it's the best no it doesn't mean that so be conscious of what you're spending uh there's a couple of chinese shops most of the stuff here i bought it from chinese shops uh because they're very cheap and you don't you always have to get the generic you don't need to get the original og and more expensive brand so please be conscious on when you're spending your money and don't buy everything at all at once you can buy all of this all at once because this is just your minimum basic but don't go buying everything crazy and then you're spending a lot of money which is not necessary especially if you're starting a business and also if you want you know to do home maintenance so take note of that and i'm so grateful that you sticked around until uh the end thank you so much for this i really appreciate you and until next time thank you cheers bye